Yo, all minions, so the economic system we live in under the moment, capitalism, it's all been invented, yeah? Like the monetary policy, the currency we use, the financial rules, the banks, all that has all been invented by humans. It's a huge, entirely made up game whose rules basically incentivize the entire global population to chase a certain thing. And that certain thing globally is money. I mean, every single human being basically wakes up almost every day and has to go and do something, do some productive thing to chase money. And now this system's definitely beneficial. We're basically using maths as a way to kind of civilize the human monkey, which is what we've done. You know, we're not bashing each other over the head to get resources. We're working for each other and trading. And we're making money seem as though it's scarce, even though it's not. It's like literally just created out of thin air and just, you know, numbers in a database. Um, it makes us all slaves, but it does incentivize everyone to be productive and add value. Particularly creating a new economic system for your country or for the entire, entire planet has only been something that the top government officials and banking elite have been able to do. In fact, most of the economic rules and systems and even institutions like the IMF and World Bank, they were created by 730 delegates from 44 allied countries in 1944 towards the end of World War II. Now, under this Bretton Woods system, the US actually came out on top because they controlled two-thirds of the world's gold and they required all other currencies to basically float and use the US dollar and gold as a reserve currency. But when you write the rules to a new economic system, you're basically writing in your own kind of like entrenched power. And this is why the United States is now and still now the largest economy on the planet. Now, Bitcoin comes along in 2009, just seven years ago, and actually overcomes a few technical hurdles to prove to the world that you can have a decentralized distributed currency that is void of any government or bank control. Bitcoin currently has a market cap of around nine or ten billion dollars. So it's like absolutely nothing in comparison to the market cap of, you know, other traditional world currencies. So it, it hasn't achieved its mission. Now, the Bitcoin blockchain is only really intended for currency and like monetary transactions. You can't deploy applications, you can't run, you know, intelligent applications within that same blockchain. And so this is where like decentralized platforms like Ethereum, which only launched just last year, 2015, enable you to not only create cryptocurrencies, but also create smart applications, decentralized dApps and smart contracts. Very early on, like many years ago, myself and my mate Tristan actually saw the benefit in this of actually creating economic models and currencies to incentivize user behaviors on online platforms. Because on Ethereum, it's actually really easy to create your own currency, your own floating cryptocurrency, much like Bitcoin. You can just, a few lines of code, and you can say, okay, I want to create a currency with 100 million coins. Go. And so the cool thing here is, like, when you're actually creating a cryptocurrency for your site or your company or whatever, it's kind of like issuing shares, because you're saying there's only 100 million of these in existence, um, and that's it. And so what a lot of people do when they create these cryptocurrencies is they'll have a crowd sale, and there's tons of crowd sales happening right now for all these little cryptocurrencies, um, which is kind of like running an IPO at the beginning of the startup. And so you set an arbitrary value on each of these coins. So maybe one of your cryptocurrency coins might be worth like one US cent or like, you know, a fraction of a fraction of Bitcoin. So you set that initial value. By the very nature of being a floating decentralized cryptocurrency, these coins then start with an initial value and then they can be bought and sold on any external exchange. And honestly, this is the greatest way ever to launch a startup. Once people actually catch on to what these other groups are doing, this, this is the way investment's going to work. This is the way startups are going to function. Because if you actually have a successful crowd sale campaign, you can raise millions of like US dollars, which you can then use to grow this startup rapidly. And you have tens of thousands of shareholders invested. Those shareholders now have a vested interest in seeing that startup succeed because if it goes really well, then obviously the value of the coin goes up. So their investment goes up. So they'll be promoting it. They'll be using the site. They'll do whatever they need to do. So now you have tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of users who have a vested interest in their platform. They become your beta users. What you can also do is code in this system so that with every user action you want, they can earn coins. And so like Tristan and I have always wanted to launch next-gen platforms uh, that kind of like help build hive minds and help create massive collective intelligence well beyond what Facebook and Reddit have been doing, which hasn't changed in many years. And so this is where you're actually designing a new economy because you're establishing the, uh, the currency and all the rules to incentivize the behaviors that you want your users to do within that economy on your platform. And so just four months ago, Steam it launched publicly. They now have a market cap of 180 million US dollars. Um, it's the same thing. They've got a coin which incentivizes a social network that's decentralized. So these guys aren't built on the Ethereum blockchain. They built their own thing for some reason. Um, but the cool thing is they've done this exact incentive mechanism. So they're incentivizing users to post, comment, and upvote to earn Steam. And Steam is just one example of many that are launching. So uh, another one called Scenario is actually launching soon, another decentralized platform for building social dApps, uh, and a big one called Akasha, which is going to be built on Ethereum. Now, the best way I like to think about these services and these new platforms that are coming out is not as though they're new decentralized like social networks. They're not a decentralized Reddit or a new decentralized Facebook. They're more than that. They're economies. Because these platforms actually snowball. They're, they're literally exploiting the exact same fundamental mathematical incentive rules and structures of global economies like, like capitalism. <laughs> So I actually think within the next couple of years, maybe within the next five years, we're going to start seeing uh, platforms like this that actually reach $100 billion market caps, or even like $1 trillion market caps. And when you're talking that scale of market cap, you're literally starting to rival 
traditional real world economies. I mean, when you're talking a trillion dollar platform, this is why I think any of those like uh, hacktivists or activists or anarcho capitalists or like, you know, communists or socialists or people who want to end capitalism, if they're not working on the blockchain, they're utterly useless. Because I fundamentally believe you can design something like Steemit where you use your own cryptocurrency and some economic incentive on this platform to actually reach a trillion dollar market cap within the next five years. At a trillion dollar market cap, that puts you within the top 15 economies of the world. So you have huge economic power. And the cool thing is that you're not limited by borders or the number of citizens you happen to have in that country. In terms of nominal GDP, the largest economy in the world is the United States with about $18 trillion. So that's not a whole... it's not that far off. If you can snowball it fast enough... <laughs> And of course, at a certain scale, at a certain, certain market cap, uh, your platform can actually provide more value to your users than the traditional system, so they can transition away from capitalism and just live entirely within your system. I think maybe all the great wars of history and all the current wars at the moment have all been fought over either resources or ideology, whether that's political, economic, or religious ideology. Honestly, I think those are all completely moot. There's only one ideological war that matters, and no one's aware of it. It's centralism versus decentralism, and it's going to cause the greatest change in human history. It's occurring right now, at